If you create a loop on a switch and it's completely unchecked, you're going to have downtime. There's going to be problems associated with that. Very often when we are working with switch configurations and we're plugging in a device or we're unplugging a device, we're being very careful to make sure that we don't create a loop. Very often we're also configuring something called spanning tree protocol in the switch itself to avoid situations that might occur if we happen to accidentally create a loop somewhere in the network. Every switch is communicating back and forth using MAC addresses. A packet comes in, the MAC address is analyzed, and the switch determines where that packet goes based on the destination MAC address of that particular packet. So every device is going to have its own MAC address. Everything plugged into the switch has a very different MAC address associated with it. So all the packets are very specific as to where they're going. Unfortunately, things like broadcasts and multicasts go to every port on the switch. If we put a single broadcast into a switch, it sends then copies that broadcast to every other device that might be connected to that switch. And that repeating to every switch port can often be a problem when we're having something like a loop on our switch. We also have to keep in mind that these MAC address packets have no mechanism inside of them to age out or to time out. If we were talking about TCP IP, the IP protocol has within it the header itself a function called time to live. And that time to live is really referring to the number of times we hop through a router. It's not the unit of time like seconds or minutes might be. It's how much it loops around the network or how many times it goes through a router. So if you had an IP packet that was in a loop and it was going through multiple routers, it would eventually time out and be removed from the network. With switches, we don't have that kind of mechanism. A packet could technically loop forever. There's nothing inherent in the communication of a switch or those MAC addresses that would remove it from the network after a certain amount of time. So obviously, if we create a loop, it's going to be there until we remove that loop from the network. If we're simply plugging in one device to the network and a broadcast comes out, it comes out of that link onto the device that might be on the other side, and the packet ends right there. The packet doesn't loop back into the network. There's no issue with that. But if we happen to misconfigure a connection on the switch, or we happen to take one end of a cable and unfortunately loop it around and plug it directly back into the switch, we might have a problem. Now, obviously, if it's a single switch like this, there's nothing else plugged in, it's very easy to see in this diagram that a loop exists. But imagine a data center and a wiring plant, and there are hundreds and hundreds of cables. Those cables may go into a cable collector, and they may come out of that. It becomes very easy when you're looking at two ends of a cable to find out that they might seem to be from different sources. You may have no idea they happen to be the same cable, so it's very easy then to plug it in. And if that happens, a packet that is out that's a broadcast might come out of that port and be sent right back into the switch again. And of course, because it went back into the switch, that broadcast gets put back onto the network, and the loop occurs again. And the next broadcast occurs again, and the next multicast, and it grows and grows and grows very, very rapidly. Suddenly, you have the packets very, very quickly building. You're getting a larger number of them. And ultimately, you're using up all of the resources inside of that switch when that occurs. Now, if we had spanning tree turned on for this particular configuration, the switch would recognize that a loop occurred and that a loop was in place. And it would stop. It would block one of those connections. And although we'd be plugging it in and wondering, why is our configuration not working properly? Uh, the advantage to that, of course, is that everybody else in the switch continues to operate normally. Nobody knows that you had any type of problem associated with that. So unfortunately, the only way to fix that problem of spanning tree is not in place is to unplug and remove that connection from the switch so that the loop now goes away. So you'll know pretty quickly if you plug in a cable and there's a loop, because very, very quickly, in a matter of moments, that entire switch will become so overloaded that nobody will be able to operate. So fortunately, these aren't things that just magically appear overnight. We're making a physical change. So if you run into that situation where you've made a change and now suddenly things aren't working right, you may just want to simply unplug those cables, trace everything back, and make sure that you didn't inadvertently create a switch loop.